Hey Yard Nerds, it's such a beautiful day today in Southeast Louisiana. I thought I would record my narration for this Arnold Palmer inspired tea illustration outside today. So I'm sitting in a sunbeam and listening to the birds. So if you hear some ambient outside noises, you guys know why. So this is the sixth tea illustration in my tea illustration series, five of which are going to become postcards for the 7-inch Kara Volume 2 Kickstarter. And uh, this is just my chance to kind of sit back and watercolor chat with you guys. So I've been painting in a Canson XL watercolor sketchbook. You know, I feel like sometimes when it comes to watercolor supplies, I come off a bit as a snob, but uh, I definitely really enjoy painting in Cancel cancel canson xl watercolor sketchbooks because they're very affordable you can find them just about anywhere and that they now that they're doing like 30 percent more paper they last forever so i really feel like they're a good value and if you're looking for just a kind of a good mixed media sketchbook the XL watercolor sketchbooks have got you covered. They take marker well, they take paint well, they have enough tooth that they probably take color pencil decently. So this was sketched with a Pilot Color Eno pencil and um, I used the pink one. The pink one kind of blends in well with the watercolor and this is kind of my lineless watercolor technique. The soft pigmented leads kind of bleed out into the watercolor and basically disappear. And I apologize for my hair getting in the way. I haven't had a haircut since June, I believe. And that was the first one I'd had since March. So I'm definitely due for another one. Still trying to find a, a hair salon that can cut short hair in my local vicinity. So I apologize that my floofy short hair has entered the shot here and there. So this illustration is inspired by the Arnold Palmer, which is a combination of either sweet or unsweet tea. I prefer unsweet tea with equal parts of lemonade. And they're so delicious and refreshing. Growing up in Southeast Louisiana, I got to tell you guys, I hated sweet tea. Like I still don't like sweet tea. Um, and it's because I, I realized as an adult and I've tried other teas and I've brewed my own tea. It's because it tends to be way over brewed down here to the point where it's like very full of tannic acid. But Arnold Palmer's kind of got me to start trying other teas because the lemonade just really helps cut down, strangely enough, considering it's an acid based drink, but it kind of cuts down on the tannic flavor of the tea. And, uh, on a similar note, Lebanese tea, which is rose water, basically lemonade and tea is also very, oh, and pine nuts is also very delicious. So if you like Arnold Palmer's, you'll probably like Lebanese tea, but um, Arnold Palmer's are kind of like, gosh, I should order them more often or I should make them myself. Like now that I'm talking about them, I'm really selling myself into them, but uh, they're kind of like Mugicha, which is a, a, an iced or hot barley tea in that they are very refreshing and they feel very summery to me. And it's just the sort of thing that you sit out on your porch and you just kind of watch the day go by and you sip yourself some delicious tea. Now that I think about it, maybe I should do a Moogie Cha inspired illustration. Ah, oh, will this series never end? Maybe it's just an excuse for me to relax, paint some watercolor and, you know, chit chat with you guys, hang out with y'all. So at the time of recording, it is November 3rd. So it is election day. I know a lot of people are very stressed out today. I'm doing my best to kind of keep things as chill as possible in my own immediate local vicinity. No TV, very limited internet, which opens up all this time for recording narration over videos. It also opens up all this time for just sitting out on my porch, soaking up some sunlight and enjoying the day. So, uh, in other news, Joseph and I just finished uh, Seven Inch Kara Volume Two. Fingers crossed that is. We sent it off to Versa, the printer, and most of what was left to do in Volume Two is we needed to put in a couple more illustrations, and I needed to do a whole lot of color adjusting. And then Joseph spent several hours adjusting the black level because um, it was oversaturated, and apparently when your K levels are oversaturated and you're printing, that can lead to the ink literally flaking off the paper. So you can definitely have too much of a good thing and then it turns into a terrible thing. 
So he ended up doing like a hundred some odd pages of corrections, kind of last minute last night, but we got the files in. I am really looking forward to seeing what Versa does with volume two. I think we're going with the 50% recycled ego paper, which uh, is pretty awesome. Um, as somebody who co-owns a very small, very humble paper farm, uh, or tree farm rather, my brother and I own a couple of acres in Franklinton, Louisiana that we inherited from our dad and he'd been using it as a tree farm. So it's, it's still a tree farm, but uh, there are definitely some sustainable ways to uh, grow and harvest wood. And after this cutting, we've been talking about having um, local wildlife and fisheries come out and recommend some native species to plant. Cause right now it's a lot of pine and pine has its pros and cons, but as a softer wood, it really cannot withstand some of the weather they get in Franklinton, like, you know, tornadoes. So um, the land's going to look ugly for a little while, but hopefully by the time Joseph and I have kids and our kids are teenagers, it'll start to be really pretty again. Of course, that does mean we have to have those trees harvested, and that has still yet to happen. Today would have been a good day for it, honestly, because the weather is just so nice. And I'm sure I'm making some of my friends who live further up north Jelly Belly because I know some of you guys have snow. And uh, even in Nashville around now, it would have been starting to get rainy and cold, rainy and cold. And my arthritis would have been acting up. And y'all, since moving back down to Louisiana, I have had no problems with cold related arthritis. I've had problems with overwork related arthritis and me straining my hands too much. And, you know, general artist mistakes. But uh I haven't had any problems with cold related arthritis, which is so wonderful. I didn't think I could do another winter where my hands were locked up half the season. All right, so with every one of these watercolor illustrations, I pick a couple of hero colors. Now, by this point, I've been using a lot of the same colors over and over again. You know, it's become thematic. So it's a little bit of a challenge to pick hero colors for this because they're probably going to be colors that I picked before. So let's go with so just some standards. I have been using just plain old burnt sienna a whole lot. I use it uh, in these illustrations to kind of darken Kara's skin tone without muddying it too much or adding too much opacity. Like if you add a bunch of yellow ochre and a bunch of scarlet, it does start to affect the opacity. But if you use uh, burnt sienna, it doesn't affect the opacity as much. So it's a good way to kind of darken lighter skin tones and to be able to paint in some shadows. So it is probably Windsor & Newton burnt sienna. Uh, I'd have to go and check the tubes to tell you, but I'm really not that picky. I will say Da Vinci's Burnt Sienna is a really nice, clean mixing Burnt Sienna. So um, if you're putting together your own palette, a tube of Da Vinci will last you a while. And it's a really nice, beautiful, clean color. One of the other hero colors is going to be Sennelier's French Ultramarine Deep which I've been using. I'm using it right now. I've been using it to paint in all the shadows underneath the leaves and to paint the shadows that kind of place Kara on the paper itself. And this is a really nice ultramarine. So uh, years ago, when I first started watercoloring, uh, people would recommend, oh, you need an ultramarine in your palette. You need an ultramarine in your palette. And a lot of the ultramarines I'd use to that point were like Windsor and Newton's ultra ultramarine or like Cotman's ultramarine. And I really didn't like them because the gum Arabic used was very yellow and it cast this really yellow shade. It made my ultramarine look kind of dirty. And it wasn't until I tried core watercolors that I was like, okay, ultramarine might be my jam. And then when I reviewed the Da Vinci uh, mixing set, which I use a lot, that's when I really started to fall in love with Ultramarine. So now Ultramarine Deep is a staple in my palette. I use it a lot. It does granulate a lot, which I think can add a lot of really nice, beautiful visual activity, visual texture, visual granulation to the paper. It makes it a little bit more interesting. I do apologize for the uh, grindy noise in the background. So it is such a gorgeous day today. One of my neighbors is using this beautiful day to cut the grass, can't say I blame them. So that's what that noise is. I'm not about to be thrown into a wood chipper or anything like that. And hopefully you guys can hear me plenty fine over that. I know when recording audio for YouTube, it's funny because like I'll be watching LPers and they'll just like randomly apologize for some dog barking in the background that we can't even hear. And then there'll be videos where I swear 
uh, noise in the other room. I can't hear it, but my audio is able to pick it up. So it's always uh, a guess shoot, I guess, as to what's going to get picked up and what is going to kind of get scrubbed out. But hopefully you guys can hear me plenty fine and plenty clear. So unless I do the Moogie Cha, or so I was kind of thinking I should do a postcard design with Tanner and a postcard design with Naomi. And Tanner would definitely be a Moogie Cha kind of person. As a messenger, you know, traveling through the grass, traveling long distances, he definitely needs something to kind of refresh him. And I was kind of thinking maybe like a green tea, like a matcha latte for Naomi. <laughs> she seems like she definitely wants some caffeine, but not too much caffeine. And then I hint at it in Kara, but I don't like obliquely state, but she's a little bit of a nerd. She's a little bit in the anime for sure. There's posters up on her walls. And that's what she likes to doodle. And in chapter seven, she's got Kara reading manga. So uh, definitely a green tea or maybe like a soccer tea would be Naomi's drink of choice. So I might have two more of these in me and then I got to decide which ones to include in the postcard set. So um, I was really kind of leaning towards including them because this set is very Kara heavy. It does focus mostly on the tea, so that's my justification. But I know there's a lot of people who really like Naomi. Obviously, she's the other main character, so she's pretty important. And a surprising number of people really like Tanner considering he's only officially shown up in Chapter 1. Now, in the four comas that introduce Volume 2 and recap Chapter 1, because so many people have told me they love Tanner and he's their favorite, which is like, he gets four pages. How is he your favorite? But okay, he's their favorite. They like him the best. I, I get it. Uh, I do draw him a lot. So maybe that's where their affection for Tanner is coming from. But uh, Or just the idea of like this tiny little Lilliputian messenger dude running messages all over the neighborhood and trying to keep people connected is just charming to people. I can see that. I have this like whole picture book story of like Tanner's first day of work and the, and like how the village he lives in kind of collaborates to make sure he has a successful first day. And I really need to like get on that because that, that like I, it's all scripted out. I need to just draw it. It'd be easier than drawing a comic. Um, I don't think I could find a publisher willing to take such an esoteric story, but dang, it would be cute. So that might that might be something I put into the works once volume two was like done done and that way the people who are like do you have any books for boys I can be like well Kara is for everyone but if you're looking for a book with a male character I have this picture book here anyway he's Tanner is like people's favorite main character and he should be in the postcard set right best boy should be in the postcard set although it'd be kind of sad for him to only get one postcard and Kara gets six postcards but uh, I guess it's pretty clear that I have a favorite child. I'm sorry. So let's see. We talked about Burn Sienna. I don't know if I mentioned a second hero color. Let's go with a lizard and crimson because I've used a lizard and crimson a lot when painting the blush and when painting some of the cooler bluer reds in some of the postcards throughout this series. So a lizard and crimson didn't get used a whole lot in this piece. I did use a lot of the Burnt Sienna in the Arnold Palmer itself. So the main colors for that are Daniel Smith's Old Quinn Gold and Windsor Newton Burnt Sienna. But, you know, Elizabeth and Crimson has been used in so many of my watercolor paintings and I just don't talk about it enough that it definitely deserves the limelight. I feel like me and Elizabeth and Crimson are really similar in that we're like both workhorses and we're always around and we're always there and you can really rely on us but we're not very showy and we work better with other colors. So people don't talk about us a whole lot, but dang it, sometimes we deserve the limelight too. And I wish I could tell you guys which yellow I'm using for this. I would have to like go dig through my tubes and check. It's a, it's a warmer yellow. I usually use like bismuth yellow because it's a really good yellow for mixing foliage. This one's more of like a sunshiny yellow and it's more opaque. Um, so it doesn't, it's not a super good mixing yellow. It makes great oranges, but it's not like a super good mixing yellow if you want to layer on top of it. But as like a standalone yellow, it's got a lot of oomph and it works so well for like lemons like we have here on the rim of this very tasty Arnold Palmer.
right, now that we are all watercolored, it's time to get to inking. And of course, I am using the old standby, the Tombow Furunosuke brush pens. I've talked about these a lot. I really like them. If you work with traditional art, if you work with kind of illustration art like I do, I highly recommend you give them a try if you haven't tried them yet. They are a little bit harder in terms of like the nib density than like say the Kuratake Fudego Koji or the Sakura Pigma FB. But gosh, once you get used to it, they are really easy to use. They're no cleanup at all because they're brush pins and they work well with alcohol markers. You guys have probably seen me use them in some of my recent alcohol marker tutorials and they work well with watercolor. So, you know, I'm a big fan of art supplies that are just like low fuss, low must. They just always deliver when you want them to deliver, which is why I don't, me personally, I don't like gouache because for me, gouache is so unpredictable, y'all. But I, that's just personal preference. I'm sure some people are watching this and they're like, but you watercolor. And watercolor is pretty unpredictable too <laughs> when you're first getting used to it. And shoot, even when you're used to it, it does throw some surprises your way every now and then. To me, that makes it just kind of fun, you know? It's like somebody you've been dating for five years suddenly decides to whisk you away on a vacation. Or, um, I don't know, suddenly decides that it's just never going to dry on the paper and it's just going to sit on the paper forever and you just better get over it. So on that note, on the note of drying, you know, we have since moved to southeast Louisiana where it is usually very humid. We do have hurricanes down here and yet I'm still watercoloring. How am I doing that? Well, we have a ginormous dehumidifier that runs basically nonstop. We also run the AC all the time and we run fans because air circulation is key. I also have not done anything that's like really paper sopping yet. I mean, I've done a few like sketchy things like that, but I haven't done a full illustration like that. But I'm thinking the dehumidifier might be the key to the kingdom. I remember years ago, I asked the Windsor and Newton rep, who is a professional artist from Baton Rouge and taught watercolor at LSU. I asked if he would recommend getting a dehumidifier if you were painting in Louisiana. And he just rolled his eyes at me and treated that question like it was the dumbest question anyone had ever dared utter. So I'll tell you guys, I do think having a dehumidifier can be really helpful if you live in a humid area. It doesn't have to be Louisiana. There's lots of humid areas. Florida's humid, Mississippi's humid. Sometimes Ohio's humid shoot. Nashville was humid quite often. If you live in a humid area, a dehumidifier can be really helpful with controlling your atmospheric humidity, which is gonna help you control your dry time. So you're gonna have more predictable dry times. Now on the flip side, Nashville would get cold enough that the air would get really dry and things would dry too quickly. So if that becomes a problem, also having a one room humidifier might be useful and then it's just like a lot of back and or boil tea that's usually what joseph and i end up doing is just boiling tea all the time to drink hence the tea inspired illustration but uh that could be a way to kind of help keep that delicate balance of air humidity and i can't tell you guys off the top of my head what like the ideal relative humidity is for your, your interior, it probably depends on how well your house is sealed and whether you live in a really humid environment in general and whether your house itself is just kind of musty. I mean, some people have kind of musty houses. My mom's upstairs, which was built in like 2000? No, 1998. Her downstairs is fine, but the upstairs gets really cold and damp. So, um, and that's because she had them re-weather seal it. So it's a your mileage may vary situation. So now that we have finished inking this piece, it's time to add the icing to the cake, the finishing touches, a little bit of white gouache here and there just to add some highlights. This piece went so much faster than some of my other pieces. I didn't time lapse it as much as I've time lapsed some of the other ones because it's really relatively simple compared to some of them. I have a citrus tea illustration that everybody really likes. It's really cute, but it took a while because I have all these different citrus fruits that I needed to paint. Or I have a more Christmassy illustration with holly and ivy that took a really long time to paint because I had all this foliage and I was trying to build up depth so that you could understand the layers of the holly and ivy that were in a wreath around Kara. So this one came together pretty quick, which is nice, you know. These are really meant to be like nice sketches, if you know what I mean. Like they're not as rendered, they're not as serious, they're not as formed as some of my larger, more serious watercolor illustrations. They're really just meant to be, you know, some cute potential postcards, 
but also just the chance to play around with watercolor in my sketchbook and to make art that is a little less involved than some of my other art. All right, guys, so that was our sixth watercolor chat. It was definitely more chatty than some of the other chats, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was relaxing and like hanging out with a friend because that's how I see it is just a chance to kind of chit chat and hang out with my friends on the internet. You guys, I had a lot of fun painting this piece and I feel like I've just talked myself into two more. So I guess you guys can keep an eye out for a Tanner one and a Naomi one in the near future. And that'll probably come around as I'm putting the finishing touches on the seven inch Kara volume two Kickstarter campaign. There is still a lot left to do on it. Um, if you weren't able to back pre-orders for volume two are up on the site. I'm going to handle the Kickstarter orders first. Of course, they are my number one priority. And then I'll handle you guys' orders. But um, I really appreciate the support that I've gotten. This is a project that really means a lot to me. And I've put a lot of time and love into it over the years. So it's nice to see it succeed. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I hope to see you guys again really soon. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.